What is document control? Why should you use document control? And how is document control implemented? In this video, we're going to dive into that and more. Hey there, my name is Josh and I have over 10 years of experience in technical writing and I'm also the founder of Technical Writer HQ. And this video is for technical writers who want to learn more about document control. Before we dive into all that, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and that way you don't miss any of our future videos to help you understand more about technical writing, information architecture, and document control. Now let's go ahead and get started. Document control refers to the profession and practice of ensuring that approved document management standards are followed for document creation, review, modification, issuance, distribution, and accessibility. Document control, which can be used in a wide range of industries, is a key component of risk management in organizations. The purpose of document control is to ensure that documents are trusted by users. Ensure that documents are created after going through a proper review and approval process and distributed to authorized personnel only, and accurate and up-to-date, accessible, and also document control creates auditable records of document creation, modification, and exchange, and also offers multiple benefits for organizations, including efficiency, defined procedures and workflows ensure that employees know how to create documents, get them approved, know where to store them, and how to locate them when needed. And we have quality. Having procedures in place ensures that employees are always working with the most up-to-date and relevant data and documents. And this prevents a host of problems that could occur due to dealing with obsolete documents. And we have security. Every organization deals with data that is sensitive. Document control ensures that sensitive data is protected through the implementation of security protocols. Now we have compliance. Your organization will need to comply with various state, local, and federal laws. A document control system that incorporates relevant legal and regulatory requirements will help you comply with those laws and regulations. And various document control standards have been developed. Some standards are applicable to every type of organization, and some standards are relevant to just specific industries. Companies can voluntarily adhere to standards as doing so helps to improve business processes and enhances credibility as well as a brand image in the marketplace. And it's important to note that the adoption of document control may also be mandatory requirement for operating in certain markets and countries. Some examples of document control standards are ISO 9001-2015, which is one of the most popular document control standards and is focused on quality management. And we have ISO 13485-2016, which is medical device companies that tend to operate in European economic areas, which need to comply with document control standards. And a few examples of procedures used for document control are document creation. For each type of document, the document creation procedure defines a particular employee who will create the document and how it will be created. The procedure also defines the document formatting, including the information to be included in the header and footer, naming conventions, and other relevant details. And we have document review and approval. For each type of document, the document review and approval procedure defines who reviews and approves a document after it is created. The procedure includes important parts of the document that require special attention during the review and approval process. And this procedure also includes a method to be used for indicating the status of review and approval. And then we have document revision. For documents that require a revision on periodic or as needed basis, the document review procedure defines who can initiate or request document revisions and who makes the actual revisions. The procedure also includes a method to be used for recording information related to version control, such as document owner, revision number, and chronological information, such as date of current revision and next review date. Revised documents also need to undergo review and approval before they are published. And then we have document release. For documents that are approved, the document release procedure defines how and where a document is published and who can access it. The procedure also defines the relevant security restrictions for sensitive documents and whether the document can be distributed outside the organization. And then document disposal. Different types of documents have different criteria that determines when they can be removed from the organization's records. For example, a policy can be deleted after it is superseded by a new policy or employee data can be deleted by a certain time after the employee has left the company. Some documents and data have to be maintained for a certain time to comply with laws and regulations. 
and the document disposal procedure will define the relevant criteria for the various types of documents. The document control system implemented by a company depends on a multiple of factors that include legal and regulatory requirements, as well as the industry that the company operates in. For small businesses, a small team or even an individual can manage and look after all the document control requirements. But for larger businesses, a document control department is often required. So what makes up a document control department? Well, you have a document control manager with the help of their team and input from management who develops document control systems. And these systems are comprised of processes and procedures that clearly define document workflows and other relevant information, such as naming conventions, formatting, security protocols, and details related to version control. Document control specialists and coordinators who also will work in this department, and they usually work right under the document control manager and are assigned to look after document control for specific departments and projects. Then we have the document control procedure manual. These are approved document control procedures that are based on best practices. And this manual is distributed throughout the organization. In this way, all employees know the exact procedures they have to follow for any type of document that they are working on or need to work on. And then we have electronic document management system or EDMS. Even though paper-based documents and document control procedures are still used, most modern document control is performed by electronic document management systems, so the EDMS. The list of advantages offered by electronic document management systems is a long one. It's much more effective than anything paper-based. And here we'll focus on the advantages that are relevant to document control, which is efficiency. An electronic document management system also helps to reduce loss or misfiled documents, regulatory violations, and frequent data entry errors. We also have workflow automation. You can define automated document workflows that are optimized for your requirements and speed up document review and approval. We also have audit trails. Electronic document management systems create auditable trails of all changes made to documents. And then we have security. You can control access to business documents through password protection. And advanced security features ensure that your critical digital documents are protected from security breaches and cyber threats. Next, disaster recovery. Document management software allows you to back up critical company documents and data to either a disaster recovery, so what they call a DR site, or to the cloud. And disaster recovery offers you peace of mind as you know that business continuity will be maintained even if a disaster such as an earthquake, storm, or extended power outage affects the primary data repository and makes it unavailable. And disaster recovery will also protect your data in case the primary repository is compromised by a security breach. And there you have it. We just covered what is document control, why you should use document control, and how it's implemented. Thank you for watching the video and sticking with us all the way to the end. Again, my name is Josh from Technical Writer HQ. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with everything technical writing. And I'll go ahead and see you on some of our following videos. Cheers.